Hello and welcome to your daily dose. No, it's not a daily dose anymore. It's a weekly dose. <laughs> Hello and welcome to hashtag the Vicky Talks, your weekly dose of Vicky Ramo, where I share views, trends, topics, and news that are important to me and Sierra Leoneans at home and in the diaspora. If you are just logging on, thank you. Bye, Kawe, Momo, Yo, and that's all the languages I have for you today. <laughs> Hi, guys, how are you? Salam alaikum to everybody who's still fasting in these last 10 days of Ramadan, and to all the women who, like me, are now on the bench, handicapped by our monthly friend, Mikwibia. Um, if you're tuning in today, let me know where you're tuning in from. You did Salon, you did England. Hi, Josephine. Um, today, yes, today I have a job because we did one foot in and one foot out. <laughs> one foot in, one foot out. I have to let people know that uh, Ramadan is almost over and I will be back. I will be back. Oh, Vicky, the job fits you. Before continue, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it, sweetheart. Don't worry about it. Um, so thank you, Ali, for joining us from Germany and Jacqueline in Sierra Leone, Aminata in Freetown. Um, it is always such a pleasure to, you know, hang out with you guys, have these conversations. Ooh, from Burundi. Okay, Koto. Koto, you're the first person tuning in from Burundi ever. That's amazing. So thank you. So yeah, I know some people then go to Cots Fast Guys on a salon, so not go able to join we. But for those who are watching, don't forget to click the share tab so that other people can join this conversation. We have two things to talk about today, and we have three guests. Um, today on hashtag the Vicky Talks, we're gonna be talking to Emmy nominated award winning Sierra Leonean filmmaker Lansana Bami Boy Mansare, whose new film, The New Boats, just received an award in San Francisco in the US, where it played to um, an audience that was quite satisfied with what they saw. And everybody's super excited. I tweeted about this. Um, thousands and thousands of people on Facebook and on Twitter are celebrating this win and this film. So I'm going to talk to Lance and I, uh, well, most of us know him as Bami Boy, um, about his work. Thank you, Tijan, for tuning in from Lagos. Um, and then, you, as you know, the National Grand Coalition and the Sierra Leone People's Party have formed what they're calling a progressive alliance. Today, we will talk to two members of the NGC, one a former member, one a current member, um, to get their views on this progressive alliance. I'm saying progressive alliance in quotes because not to me say a progressive Na den se is pro e progressive. Um, so that's where we are today. So thank you, Mora. Again, if you're just tuning in, this is hashtag the Vicky Talks, your daily dose of moi. Um, if you're just watching, let me know where you're watching from, drop your location, and don't forget to share this in your feed or on your feed so that your friends and family can also tune in for this. What I think is going to be a very colorful conversation. <laughs> very Colorful in quotes. Okay, first up today, we are. Ooh, no, we don't need that. Okay, first up today, we are going to be looking at The New Boats, which is a new documentary film by Bami Boy that looks at illegal overfishing in Sierra Leone's waters. Before we get to that, I am going to show you a highlight from his film. Hub of the fishing, we are the largest fishing community in Sierra Leone. Well, before this time, the boat that we've been there not be indigenous then boot them or selling an indigenous but unfortunately investors they will become in the name of coming to invest in the fishing sector so economically people instead of them growing then they retrogress every blessed day when each man go get a complaint then come they tell them say these are the complaints we'll get those complaints they ever take the seal let me put an organization take up upon who said for speaking. Now let me get the committee surveillance booth. Now that they pack, all they are snatch castle, right there that they come out. Then go ram sack the sea all net. Yeah. 
That was a highlight teaser trailer from the new film um, by Lansana Bami Boy uh, Mansari. Hi, Bami Boy, how are you? Hi, Vicky, I'm doing fine, thank you. It's great to be here. First of all, congratulations on this new film project and on your recent award in San Francisco. La Lidam actually from tweets, Le Aebu called the award properly. So those people who want to celebrate, you know exactly uh, what we're celebrating. So it was the tweets, where are you? Twitter, where's Twitter? Okay. So it is the um, Coastal and Island Culture Awards at the International Ocean Film Festival in San Francisco. And I believe this happened over the weekend. Um, so before we get into talking to uh, Barmy Boy, just some statistics to throw out there for you. Um, so according to President Bio in 2018, he said that illegal, unregulated, and unreported unre fishing in Sierra Leone's uh, coastal waters costs us about $50 million every single year. $50 million. That ain't a $50 million losses to the GDP and to the economy, meaning that because you have these foreign trawlers fishing illegally in our waters, local coastal communities, artisanal fishermen, and just like anybody that's allowed in the fishing industry, they're not a benefit. So the fish they bypass the economy, it is go like for saying that other person can come out. The other thing is that 40% of the industrial licenses, and this is uh, reporting from The Guardian, 40% of the industrial licenses for fishing in Sierra Leone are owned by Chinese vessels. Now, for Una we no, no, you know, traditionally, where you get artisanal, artisanal fishermen in a salon, then get cycle for how then they fish. Just like how we go say farmers then get cycle, but how then they farm. You know, say pan farming, you go farm in one part of the land at a certain time of the year, then you give that land they break, you go farm other side, let you not know, pull too much of the, the gun in nutrients, them, you know, deplete the soil. Now we take agriculture, home economics, mm -hmm. but let you not completely deploy, deplete, pull all the resources and minerals from the soil. You they go, you they plant different thing, different side throughout the year. The same thing from fishing. So we, for we own artisanal fishing industry, uh, generations, generation, generation, we always been get way, but how we they fish and tools the way we they fish, we be they work sustainably with the environment. So you're not going to get some seaweed and call overfishing, the way how we ancestors them in the fish in the water. Now, what's you not happen is that with the emergence of then Chinese scholars there, so with some of them will get licensed, but some of them will not get licensed um, because we don't even get the capacity for regulate them and monitor them or punish them. Then they do overfishing. So size self way, they're not for fish, then they fish. Then back, size suppose for the outside, then they left space between waiting, then they fish. And like them, because they get big scholar, they're supposed to go deep, deep, deep sea for left distance yeah. between the because you know, so then canoe, then they can only go so far. So, side they were like the 
then for zone then they were enough for fish because now they the artisanal um fisherman they we all look at fishermen and the fish then therefore go deep deep inside the water but they know they do that and they can't inside um beyond territory so where the local fisherman they now they go for go fish they know they will get better thing um so bami boy tell me but what to make you be one for make this film new boats um and why you choose tombo specifically <clears throat> well um th thank you very much vicky um well, the inspiration behind the film, basically, um, I grew up in a community called Kokul Bay. And um, when I grew up, um, fishing played a very important role in my upbringing. So I used for fish. In fact, the name Bami Boy, a nickname, one of my fishermen party didn't give me a, it means the Grand Tilapia. So, um, oh, wow. Yeah. So you're like the big fish. We get a yeah, cool inside. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so... Um, so basically, I haven't moved on to storytelling, and but you know, once in a while, I go down and go visit some party then, and some of the social issues then where I see, where I see some of these communities they face now, then it not be dated before, you know, issues like food security, migration, fish scarcity, illegal fishing, and and many more of the issues then we where the film raise. So just you know, going to see friends and some family members. So you know, as you know, as a former fisherman myself, and um, and also as as somebody where like many other Sierraleans depend on fish for, for a lot of the protein that we eat. You know, I just think say it was important for me for highlight this issue and tell this story because it is very um it is very dear to me. So I select Tombo because Tombo is the largest artisanal fishing port in Sierra Leone with over 600 boats, both um fishing and transport boats. So most of the fish then we're gonna market them around, you know, western area, western urban, you know, now from Tombo they come out even some fish with the dry fish that we do go up line. So it's kind of the largest fishing ports, local fishing port that we have. So, and okay. also the community themselves be really open because this issue, they, they, you know, they, they, they affect, you know, fishing communities all around the country. So when I, when I go there and meet with the characters, you know, um, people like Woody, Passport and Sule, they were really keen to tell the story. You know, it was boiling on there and they wanted to tell the story. So yeah, so then I begin, I begin work with them with research, do some research and development and begin film. So yeah, now that make, make a select Tumbo. Tumbo is the, Tumbo is the, is the place when it comes to um, um, artisanal fishes. Okay, what's in have been the biggest surprise to you personally? I mean, I know that before you did the film, you already kind of had some idea of waiting me to go on uh, the community because of the like pre interview that we, we did do. But what's in have been the, mo what's in have been the most surprising thing where you find out while making this documentary? Yeah, well, I found out quite a lot. Um, I found out how corrupt the whole fishing sector is, very corrupt. And um, and I find out from the people them um, about also what they call Chingin Chonga. Um, so this na name, this na name would then get to semi-industrial fishing boats them, small fishing boats. And so most of the big companies we get the industrial fishing boat then. They also get the semi-industrial fishing boat then. Where they go to the same water outside the local fisherman that they go fish and they go compete with them. And in the marine protected areas. So I meet this problem. I don't mean I don't be know about them because you know I can see them around like in areas like you know more in town and all that, but I not be know the, mm -hmm. the danger with them post to, to local communities. So sitting down with these people, my characters and the community, just listening from them opened my eyes and surprised me um as to really what they happen um now we now we fishy sector. Um, but also, I think um, one of the things that also we we a big problem. I think we most Sierra Leonean they don't know now that the yellow card band we Sierra Leone they under from the EU it was placed for over like it was I think it's over fifteen years ago really. So it means say mm -hmm. uh, you know, as a country, we're not able to sell fish directly in the international market, specifically in the EU market because of this. And why um, is that? This yellow card band. So it, they issued the band because I think just doing doing or after the war, they say we're not getting enough, you know, the, the requisite processing facilities and blah blah blah, but all the things then. So, but that 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 band itself opened a lot of doors for exploitation because mm -hmm. we get companies that way they fish in a salon, where they work in a salon and they fishing. So it means say now waiting with the waiting we get, you know, it opened a lot a lot of doors for 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 and you know poachers. And other companies then so now you get we own fish they go to the international market rebranded as fish from other countries then 
you know, it can be fish from Ghana, fish from Ivory Coast, you know, a diamond can not carry identity card, you know, go look down and say, no, from Salary Common. So, yeah, so a right, lot of that right. they happen, and it, and it, and it debates our economy, it undercuts our economy, it causes so much problem for local fishes. And, um, so that being also surprised, um, um, you know, that be also be opened my eyes to a lot of things there. So these are some of the things that, that I get Boku, but, um, and also the sure, level sure, of sure, migration, sure, sure. the level of mm -hmm. migration, uh, the fishing communities there. So what's in the happen because of the scarcity of fish, you know, and um, local fishermen are not defend the business lucrative anymore. So mm -hmm. as a result, then they left the woman and picking them. You know, and migrate to places like Guinea and go for what what we call Temple Run, and go look for mm -hmm. Guinea pastures. And then they left behind them, picking them, the woman them, you know, open to exploitation. Some of them they become street kids. Some of them even they go what we call on board prostitutes on these big boats. You know, so um, so it is. There's a lot of issues, a lot of social issues. Mm -hmm. You know, where where this with this research and this film open my eyes to another fishing community. As you did talk about the chimichanga way relates to fishing, it really uh, immediately I think about Galamze in Ghana. One of the problems with Ghana gets with the mining industry is that the same kind to you get um, Chinese people where they come out to China, where they can't, where not get even proper mining licenses for can mine gold, where they go in Ghana, where they go mine inside the forest, and most of the mining where they do now that shake. You know that shaker and we did not see that artisanal mining whereby right mm -hmm. chinese man and foreigner are not for participate from that economy day exactly. but then they can and they put dynamite blow the thing up then they pull the environment and then they don't get boku issue we don't pull the water source them for boku communities them so farming communities that we go there like downstream then then galamze and all or don't blow dynamite upstream. You water now all of a sudden, pot a pot of, we not get water for farming. So this issue of like, we're not able, we they give people their license, but we're not able to regulate them. So regulate the same people, exactly. that they, then, they, then they can't, then they get license for one thing. Then then Canada, the, the country, then go do other thing. Right now, so if you go up now, um, one protected area, they near Lake Sonfon, where I've been visiting on me, the VKMO show. Where they go now, the lake, you get a big, big sign where say, no mining, no mining. But as you pass the sign beyond the Chinese man and they, they, where they mine gold by the, right by the lake, when I protect, protected area and where then they dig 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 then they left 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 like boku 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 hold there all the farmland area and other place they demash and the plants gets all of and don't pull don't want to put up again yeah. we get the regulation we get the laws them <laughs> we get the laws them but it seems but it's like there's this big issue with um no regulation yeah. no enforcement no enforcement where the two we can get me is that like we know that we they always consider we self as poor country but for a country like Salon, so where you get natural resources, if you're not able to protect your national resources for the benefits of locals, what's in the value? What's in the value of, of, um, of the wealth? Um, what's in, where, where, where you make the film? I mean, I haven't seen the whole film. I've only seen the trailer. I guess one question I've been wondering while watching the trailer is like, were you able to speak to any government officials or government agencies um, to get their perspective on what they're doing to combat against um, this um, illegal overfishing? Yeah, well, um, filming the filming the throughout the filming process, it was quite difficult to get hold of them. Um, I try I reach out to um, government officials, reach out to. Um, um, even some Chinese companies, you know, that are you know established around these river and areas, and but then you know, in fact, for these companies, they know they don't want anything to do with camera, and um, like you mm -hmm. know the other, um, you know, the other government official. We try for reach out to them, especially for get clarification of what's happening with the yellow mm -hmm. card band, because also mm -hmm. we've been here. say also the, the current minister don't put some some laws then for 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 um for reduce the number of um the so called chingi chongas them and we. Um, now they, now they were time different areas then. So mm -hmm. we want to also forget them um, in touch, but then we know, we know, um, we know, we know able get, we didn't we able grant with really the kind of um, access and the interviews will be asked mm -hmm. for. So, um, okay. yeah, so even, even quite recently when we get to the big summit in Freetown, 
um, just is called the environmental, the first ever environmental film summit. To sort of screen the film, we invite everybody for come. You know, as mm -hmm. the election, they approach a critical point in our country's history. Make we see, don't talk about this and and talk mm -hmm. about the um, and the environment in general. You know, they're not not show up. Most of them not show up. Wow. So this is this is wow. the issue. These are the issues where we they where they get challenging issues. Where they get and trying to reach those you know policymakers, those in authority for make sure you know sure say an action is being taken. And also for open their eyes because some of them don't really know what's in the up and down. Like I spent about four, four years in Tumbo, you know, just down there with the community. I feel so women have been fishing mass, I'll be all team, but spending four years mm -hmm. with them, you know, I opened my eyes to a lot of things yeah, the way I think they then self and self need for listening and and, um, and understand because as you of mentioned course. also some of them they give them their license there so for you know this thing and then they go to order mm -hmm. and then they go Absolutely. To initially when this semi industrial book them in Canada the communities them then planner for being can buy fish for the local um from the sure. local fisheries and then mm -hmm. they kind of package the now and sell them. So when they come mm -hmm. they establish them then come with the young boats them. We look like the same local boats them, but bigger engines, mm -hmm. more manpower. And the worst of it, the nets mm -hmm. mostly in the drum. Of they course. Go, yes, they, they go and the nets. So when I be the go film, most of the time they go out to go film, you know, you they meet the mm -hmm. morning. And, you know, mm -hmm. with the community like Tumbo, the artisanal fishermen consortium, we develop like a local surveillance boat where they try for patrol and water them with the lead tool that they have. But they cannot, um, they cannot actually, um, you know, do them at night. They don't get the, they don't get mm -hmm. power for seas. They don't go to do them at night because they'll be referred to as pirates. So, right. um, so yeah, um, is it, it, you know, I think, I think in general, um, as you, as you mentioned, a lot they happen if we mm -hmm. never protect what we get at this point, especially where mm -hmm. you know fish now one of the things that we will not the not the imports and it becomes scarce. It becomes scarce every day. It becomes okay. scarce every day. Things are becoming difficult. Um, every it becomes scarce and expensive at the same time. Mm -hmm. And because also uh, um, we keep we own people them also get you know some beliefs. So one of the things mm -hmm. that we will do with the film also uh, we don't go into more than ten communities around trying to, you know, build this movement around getting people to understand the real issues. Because when we the film, for sure. instance, in a place like Godrich, you know, where mm -hmm. fish don't scare, scare, scare now, Godrich, they then load two, two virgin picking them in a boat, you know, for go offer, um, you know, to the gods and, you know, scatter rest around and say, make the gods release the fish then. Because these are some of the mm -hmm. things that we don't know. Of course, you know? of and course. And the same thing that happened at Tumbo. So, yes. Yeah, so, um, yeah, this film, um, like, the issues are very... You know, very important for Britain no, they're like no, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Um, I see at the end of the film. Well, two things actually, I wanted to ask you. One, I saw a couple of shots of the film that looked like they were inside or shot on one of these Chinese uh, trawlers, and I wondered how you were able to get that access. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to know is, uh, I see you have a lot of supporters at the end of the film. Um, and I was just wondering for other filmmakers, you know, how did you go about getting so much support for the film? Or did you make the film first and then later were able to get like support for, to me, to, to publish? Um, I will start with the support because I know it's very, um, very important as some filmmakers yeah. I'm going to watch. So, you know, like other projects that I've done in the past, I think for me, I don't always they apply for grants. Because unfortunately, okay. Sierra Leone is among the few countries in the world where not gets no grants for any form of arts, you know, whether mm -hmm. it's music, dance, or, you know, painting mm -hmm. or, or film. There's Except film. for the Vicky Remo Prize now. Yeah, okay, yes, 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 the Vicky. <laughs> but, what, but what I'm saying is in terms of government support. Yeah, no, government. You know, government yeah, support, no, you know they, don't even, yeah. they, don't, they don't even understand what's in the happen. So, um, so, yeah, so that's... So, what I do most of the time, I, I spend a lot of hours just applying for grants and where they pop up, whether it's for mm -hmm. research and development, whether it's for production grants, you know, post-production mm -hmm. grants, I always they apply um, which, when I get. So most times what I do, I spend some of my own resources and, and, and get like a, a proof of concept, you know, like an right. assembly, you know, mm -hmm. um, like, a, you know, two minutes, three minutes, I just shoot them and get them, then use that one day as the basis and begin apply. Um, for mm -hmm. grants um, and, and, and put them out there. So I've okay. been lucky, you know, I've been lucky also, I've been able to put, uh, position myself in a certain areas then where, where they right. apply, you know, gets 
a lot of um, a lot of supporters, but it comes also with hard work. Sometimes you apply of for course. like twenty grants; they're not even shortlist you for. for I no. know, I know, me yes. brother. That, that, that grant application, so, you need, you need, you need to be the emperor, the conqueror of rejection yeah. in order yeah. for <laughs> in order for you to really be able to like get a grant because it takes yeah. a long time. Yes. Um, and then, la what was? How did you get access to the Chinese trailer that you were able to film on? Yes, so so what happened there? So one or two times, um, um, we began. Um, there was this public viewing of um, one boat we've been come. I mean, two boat okay. them. The one, the one have for being. Um, it was the Chinese boat we've been come, but then we say they want for come and study the quantum of fish we we get and the species of okay. fish we don't left okay. na, na salon, but also the one for be put up a show about um, this is how safe it is. This is what they do, and da 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 da. -da. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so we got on board and um, and begin and begin film, but then we got kicked out when we start to ask important questions about the use of the dragnet, and okay. um, and and obviously where was the catch? This massive catch, you know, we side we side go, and and, mm -hmm. and and all that. Yeah, but luckily before we got kicked out, you were able we to get some footage. Get, um, <laughs> some good, <laughs> some, um, some good, um, some good. Okay, content. for so. For people who've not yet seen the film, um, who are gonna first discover it on this show, um, where can they watch the film next? I know you already had the Freetown viewing, but of course, now we don't win the award, nine more news will come out with the <laughs> film. So where, um, do you have any upcoming viewings coming out um, planned for Freetown or for Sierra Leone, or is the film gonna be available online? Yes, so as we speak, in fact, DW uploaded a 45 minute version of the film on YouTube. So, okay, that's Deutsche Welle. Okay. Yes, yes. And okay. we can also go on Afridocs. And we must okay. stream in, you know, because this was a co-production with Steps. Um, so Afridocs is one of our distribution partners. So they can go on Afridocs. It's free. You can just okay, you know, awesome. go on Afridocs on YouTube and on their website. And you can you can, you okay. can watch them for free, really. Fantastic. Um, thank you so much for joining me today. I wish you lots of success. I know that we only see like once every decade now. I know, I know. <laughs> it's always a pleasure um, to hear what you're doing in film and the way that you're just, I mean, I've known you for like 15 years and it's been, yeah. you know, come on, I've been there. We own TV days yeah, now, nah, yeah. and book feels that small know, office. That's small. Small. I mean, <laughs> and so it's just really amazing to know that you're still in the industry. Like you didn't, you know, because sometimes people give up along the way, right? Because it's so hard in Sierra Leone in our industry. But it's just heartwarming to know that like you're still there and you're a point of reference for what's possible. Um, when people just continue to grow and like follow up with their passion. So thank you so much for joining us today. Um, if you haven't seen the new boats, um, I will put a link to it um, later on on my Facebook page and you can access this. Fami, lots more success. I hope to catch you in Freetown one time, one day soon. Thank you. Let me know when you're around. Thank you so much. Well, I will, I will for coffee. I will. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Fami. Right. So that was Bami Boy talking about his um, latest film project, which is The New Boats. Um, which is currently available on YouTube. So that's the new boat.